Hi, I'm Sue Sheridan. I'm a bioarchaeology professor at the University of Notre Dame, and I've been asked to discuss how I engage with social media. You're looking at it. One of the real advantages of social media is that you can do it from the privacy of your own home. You can exfoliate, you can have weekend hair, be in your bathrobes, cuddle with kitties. Are you an insomniac? No problem. Are you an introverted homebody? Now you can still network with abandon in your discipline without ever having to leave the comfort of your own home. You can check in during your workday, between classes while you're doing research, to help break up the routine of your day. Running between business meetings at a professional conference, no problem. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Ah, the anthropology scarf. Whether you're using your phone, a computer, iPad, tablet, uh, any of these will work as long as you can sign on and add to the conversation. Today we have 20,000 members across all the platforms of BioAnth News with nearly 100 countries represented and people from all seven continents, including Antarctica. Most of our members are professors and students with a relatively large lay audience. We even have a couple of journalists that are members. For example, Steve Inskeep, the host for NPR's Morning Edition, once exclaimed on the site, I live for BioAnth News. So what is BioAnth News, you ask? No one asked. I think they asked. I heard you ask. BioAnth News is a social media network that crosses multiple platforms to bring together scientists conducting research in discussion with the general public um, and students as an educational tool. BioAnth News communicates the excitement and relevance of anthropology to a non-academic audience. It utilizes an integrative anthropological approach to foster discussion. Although named for a specific subfield to capitalize on Facebook's search parameters, the selection of articles cross all areas of anthropology. The purpose of BioAnth News is to use social media to educate people about anthropology with an emphasis on connections to bioanthropology, to explore current research and its treatment by the popular press, to foster collegial interaction, demonstrating firsthand that people can actually disagree strongly yet remain professional, provide teaching tools for professors and graduate students, network students and faculty far and wide, and foster input from top scholars in anthropology. The inclusivity inherent in the open access nature of social media and the ability to address social justice issues related to health, race, poverty, sex and gender, and human rights are additional benefits. Pat Shipman, professor emeritus at Penn State, once observed, this is a huge and very important service to the field. Bill Youngers, an emeritus professor at SUNY Stony Brook, added, I've become addicted and depend upon BioAnth News Daily for commentaries, educational resources, and good-natured collegiality. And Bob Martin, an emeritus curator at the Field Museum and adjunct professor at University of Chicago, once stated, I unconditionally declare my love for BioAnth News. Over the eight years the Facebook group has been active, we have had several success stories to point to. For example, the Facebook group helped generate participants for the groundbreaking SAFE study exposing sexual harassment in bioanthropology. It helped rally a public outcry about National Geographic's proposed airing of Nazi war diggers that resulted in cancellation of the series. Earlier this year, a white supremacist generated dialogue box describing Jewish conspiracy to teach racial equality appeared at the top of any search for the Boazian approach on Google. A write-in campaign by our group members helped get the post removed very quickly. One of our happiest uses was realized when Professor Lee Berger needed paleontologists with doctorates who were also advanced cavers to access a newly discovered cave filled with human fossil remains. He posted notice on BioAnth News, several of the resultant underground astronauts, as well as a senior scholar with the rising star excavation, directly credit our network with the speed with which they were able to assemble their team. On a smaller scale, a retiring professor who wanted to gift his skeletal collection to an interested anthropologist found a faculty member at a small college via BioAnth News, providing teaching research opportunities that otherwise would not have been possible. Many people use BioAnth News in their teaching 
and have their students join at the start of the semester so they can incorporate the newest findings into class discussions. I take at least 10 minutes of every class to let students describe articles they found of interest, touching on topics we might not otherwise get to in a class. Deb Martin, the Lindsay professor at UNLV, commented that all of her students are linked to the site through Facebook and its coverage creates a lot of provocative things to talk about in the class and beyond. About a dozen faculty have reported that large portions, even whole classes, have been designed around the network. Gretchen Dabbs, associate professor from Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, commented that she structured her entire graduate seminar around it. One innovative project uses John Oliver's Last Week Tonight HBO program as a model where teams of two students pick five stories from BioAnth News, summarize four of them, and then drill down on the fifth topic in depth. These shows are filmed for later evaluation. While humor is not a requirement, the inventiveness of undergraduates is often shines through. Interinstitutional and multi-campus collaborations have resulted from the use of the network in classroom activities, and the BioAnth News Network has been linked to at least four high enrollment and gateway courses, or MOOCs. There are numerous novel teaching and research aspects. Our banner photos change monthly to highlight a member's research, sampling across the many and varied sub-areas of biological anthropology. Weekly features, such as Monday Memes, are often quotable quotes from anthropologists or about the field, suitable for sharing widely. Tuesday Tourist samples sites a bit off the beaten track of interest to anthropologists while traveling. Thursday Theater suggests often notoriously bad movies featuring bioanthropology themes. Friday Fun Facts offer tidbits of esoterica suitable for impressing friends and neighbors at parties, or not. Our BioAnth Mugshots album of over 260 BioAnth PhDs offers a way to look up a person of interest when reading about their research and a handy cheat sheet at professional meetings. Undergrads and graduate students can find permanent files on the Facebook group compiled from members' comments about what can you do with an anthropology degree, are you considering a graduate school visit, or academic interview tips. John Marks, a professor at the University of North Carolina, Charlotte, said it has managed to link up thousands of senior scholars, junior scholars, and students into a broad intellectual network of opinions, discussions, and debates about the latest relevant science headlines. This has been a great service to the discipline, unimaginable when I was a young scholar. The BioAnth News Network recently hosted a conference on the use of social media for research, teaching, and public outreach. We had multiple people speak at the conference, including Bob Martin, Barbara King, Augustine Fuentes, John Hawks from a cave in South Africa, um, Mark Kissel, Anna Osterholtz, and Natalia Reagan. These are going to make up the beginning of our professional series on our YouTube channel for use in classrooms, and we'll have learning modules associated with them for students and the general public to use. Just the simple Facebook Live videos from the conference generated 1,500 views per talk. A crack team of undergraduates and graduate students have helped us build the social media network for bioanthropology news. We have 17 administrators who are professors from all the sub-areas of anthropology to ensure we maintain the integrative anthropological approach of the site. As we continue to grow, we have begun a signature video lecture series by leading scholars who understand the importance of new digital media, created a series of interactive virtual reality and 3D activities for the site, are developing a series of BuzzFeed quizzes and lists for public outreach, and we'll begin an interview series to illustrate non-traditional careers in anthropology beginning next fall. We will continue to expand our educational goals using digital immersive technologies to show students and the public the excitement of anthropology while enhancing critical thinking skills, fostering international interaction, and promoting inclusivity, civil discourse, and social responsibility through the creation of new offerings and the maintenance of the exciting nature of bioanthropology news. So come join the conversation. Sign up for Facebook, which acts as the mothership for BioAnth New the BioAnth News Network. Tweet us. Sign up for Instagram or follow us on YouTube where we have a bi-weekly BioAnth News and Review segment. We oftentimes post videos from different conferences. 
We have clips, comical and serious, for use in the classroom and just general edification. Thank you. <laughs>